I search the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough Then you came along And put me back together And every desire is now satisfied Here in your love Oh, there's nothing there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness. My failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all And you still call me friend Cause the God of the mountain Is the God of the valley There's not a place your mercy and grace Won't find me again Oh, there's nothing better than you There's nothing better than you Lord, there's nothing Nothing is better than you Oh, there's nothing better than you There's nothing There's nothing, nothing is better than you You turn morning to dancing You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory you're the only one who can You turn morning to dancing You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only one who can You turn praise into God you turn bones into armies You turn seas into highways You're the only one who can You're the only one who can Oh, there's nothing better than you There's nothing there's nothing, nothing is better than you You turn morning to dancing You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only one You turn holes into armies You turn seas into highways You're the only one who can You turn praise into goddess You turn holes into armies You turn seas into highways 
Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in and through your son, Jesus Christ. We just give you all the praise, glory, and honor that only you deserve. You are great, and you are mighty, and you are powerful, and we just give you all the glory. We ask you right now, Lord God, to, to come in and take over. We hand this meeting over to you. We invite the Holy Spirit to come in and take control. We pray over our praise and worship team we pray over our panel that's going to be here tonight we pray over pastor as he brings the word we ask you to just come in and take control right now in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen let's give jesus a hand clap for praise hallelujah are you glad to be found in the house of the lord if you're glad let me hear you scream the name of jesus i said if you're glad to be in the house of the lord let me hear you scream the name of jesus
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Father. We are so glad, God, to be found in your presence, God. God, you are the way maker, Jesus. You are the promise keeper. God, you have made a way, God, where there seemed to be no way, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. God, we worship you, Father, because of who you are, God. We give you glory, God. Even when 
and I don't see it. If you believe that God is working on your behalf, just give Him the glory that He deserves. Even when I don't see it, even when I don't see that you work. Worship the Lord, give Him the glory that He deserves. You are worthy, O oh Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know we be your name, Jesus. You never stop working, Father. Lord, the victory is ours, God, and the battle is yours, Jesus. We know, God, that you are fighting every battle, Lord. We know, Jesus, God, that you will make a way, God, where there seems to be no way. Father, we trust in you, hallelujah. We trust in you, Jesus. God, our faith is anchored in you, Father. God, for you will never leave us nor forsake us, Jesus. You are the Alpha and the Omega, God. You are the beginning and the end, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Never stop working, Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel that we can worship God some more. I feel that we can give God better worship. I feel that we can give God worship that's in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Don't hold back from receiving what God has in store for you. Don't hold back from worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah, worship defeats the enemy. Hallelujah. The song says that God, you take what the enemy. Hallelujah. You take what the enemy stole, Father. You turn it for good, Jesus. What the enemy meant for you, you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Let's believe what we sing. You take what the enemy meant for you, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Take what the enemy meant for evil, you turn it for good. You turn it for good. The weapon may be far, but it will prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't be. Cause the God I serve knows only a desire. My God will never fail. Say, oh my God will never fail. I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For 
the battle belongs to you, Lord. I want to see your victory. I want to see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take, you take what the enemy meant for evil. You turn it. Lift our hands and sing it out to Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for. Together with our hands lifted. Church family, we greet you in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. It was good to worship the Lord this evening, and we welcome your sweet Holy Presence into this place. Thank you, church. You may be seated. Well, once again, good, good evening to all of our online viewers this evening. We're so glad that you chose to join us this evening to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And to every single person that's in the building this evening, Amen. It's glad to be good. It's good to be back into the house of God. Amen. 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 Hey, Pastor, a bit quiet, Pastor. Yeah. Can we try that again? It's good to be back into the house of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, church, I hope that you're excited as much as we're excited that on the 3rd of October, we're officially back in the building on a Sunday and a Tuesday night. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Okay, this evening I'm going to share on the time of giving, and my scripture is from Luke 16, verse 10. He who is faithful with little will be entrusted with much. Amen? Amen. Amen. A passage of scripture that most of us know and also use this to remind God of his, of his word in our prayer time. Amen. So this evening, based upon the scripture in Luke chapter 16, verse 10, I just like to share a small testimony. When God says that when we're faithful with little, He will entrust us with much, we stand upon His word and we believe His word. Amen? Amen. Amen. So in that time that we're faithful with little, God is definitely going to prepare us to be faithful with the much that He's going to bless us with. So in my job, I've been, I've been trusting God for much because I believe that I was faithful with the little. And I've been praying and I've been praying and I've been reminding God, God, I'm here. I've been faithful with a little. I've been faithful with a little. So I believe it's time now that you bring in the much because I believe I'm ready. Okay? All right? So that's how we pray. That's how we trust God because we believe God is a God of the breakthrough and He's a prayer answering God. Amen? Amen. So when God brought through the much, I was excited and blessed because I knew that God was doing something new and something great in my life. But through that, I started to get revelation because at the job 
I wasn't doing as well as I was when God had given me the little and when I was faithful with that little. And the revelation that came through that, and here's something that I'd like to share with you, church, those that are in the building and online this evening. When we pray and ask God to give us the much, we must also ask God to give us the wisdom, the understanding, and the knowledge. Because when, we, when God gives us the much, we got to be prepared to handle that much. Because to whom much is given, much is required. Amen? So we got to ask God in this, and we got to add this to our prayer. We remind God of His promises. God, we believe that we're ready for the much. But in that, we also ask you that you increase us with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. The same that you bless King Solomon with. Because King Solomon was one of the most wisest and knowledgeable people on the earth because God was with him. Amen? Amen. So church, I just like to remind you that when we pray and we trust in God, let's also ask God for an increase in wisdom, understanding, and knowledge so that when he brings in the much, we will know how to manage that and use it to the benefit of God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. So even as we get ready to sow, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we thank you once again for the day that you've given us. We thank you that we can be found in your presence. You said, Lord, where there are two or three gathering your name, there you are in the midst. So we thank you once again for being with us this evening. And we give you the highest praise, honor, and glory. And Father, even as your word has gone out this, this evening, I believe, Lord, that when we pray and we trust you for the march, I pray, Lord, that may you equip us with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, so that when that much does come in, Lord, we will be able to handle that because, Father, you have given us that grace. You have given us an increase in the wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory, Lord, for all that you will do in your mighty and precious name. Amen. By his tribes, we are by his nail pierced hands we're free by his blood we're washed in now we have the victory the power of sin is broken Jesus overcame me church
just talk to God in your own words, in your own way, just exalt the name of Jesus. Just say, Lord, I thank you, Father. Lord, I honor you, Jesus. I thank you, God, for what you've done, Lord. Lord, Father, we are standing here only because of you, Jesus. Just raise your hands, everybody, and just thank the Lord. Many times we stand in the place where we are just asking and asking and asking and asking. But how about tonight we just change the course of the direction that we've been accustomed to and we just start to thank God for where you are. For who he is, thank him tonight. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, oh Lord. Come on, raise your hands. Say thank you, oh Lord. Say thank. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today that as we come before you this evening to just listen, to understand what your word says, to understand where we are as a nation and also as a church. And as we talk about the safety aspect of coming back into the building, Lord, we did not even imagine that we would be in a position like this. Never, ever did we imagine <laughs> but Lord, we are grateful today that although we have been faced with such a nasty pandemic, you are still God of all. You were God from the beginning. You were God at the ending Father, today I pray that you'll lift every fear, 
in the name of Jesus Christ lift every fear tonight I pray God that you will bring a spirit of conviction upon every believer for Satan has come about like a roaring lion and he's just had a field day over these past months but no more will Satan come and have authority over the children of God for we know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And Father, even though the enemy has come and used authorities and governments of this world to bring confusion into the lives and into the hearts of your children, we pray that it will be the wisdom of God that will prevail. And we will see a change take place. Change take place. For even here as a local church, God, we are hungry. We are not only thirsty, but we are ready as well to flow in the direction you want us to flow. And Lord, let nothing come and hinder that flow. Let no past hurts. Let no past experiences. Let no weapon in whatever way or form it may have come or featured itself past, present, or even future weapons. Let none evil prevail in the lives of your children as we prepare the atmosphere today for churches all over our nation that are getting ready to come back into <coughs> the building. And we decree the word of the Lord. Oh, 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 Lord, no fear, Lord, no fear, Lord, and as your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed before we go into this panel discussion tonight receive the word of the Lord every one of you that's here in the church tonight raise your hands Isaiah 43 verse 1 says but now this is what the Lord says he who created you Jacob he who formed you Israel do not fear for I have redeemed you and I have summoned you by name and you are mine saith the Lord and yes your blessing because you are mine saith the Lord when you pass through the waters I will be with you and even though the enemy is trying to come up against you like a flood the spirit of the Lord is raising up a standard in some of you tonight and when you pass through the rivers they will not sweep over you and when you walk through the fire you will certainly not be burned the flames will not set you ablaze for I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you. Nations in exchange for your life. 
So here it goes again. He says, do not be afraid. For I am with you. I will bring your children from the east. And gather you from the west. And I will say to the north, give them up. And I will say to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and whom I made. Lead out those who have eyes but are blind. Those who have ears but are deaf. And all the nations gather and the peoples assemble. Which of the gods foretold us and proclaimed to us the former things? Let them bring in their witnesses to prove they were right. <clears throat> so that others may hear and say it is true. You are my witnesses, declared the Lord. You that are here tonight, you that are online, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord. And my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and also believe me and understand that I am He. Before me, no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. And I, even I, am the Lord. And apart from me, there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed. And I have not, and I have not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord. That I am God, and yes, and from ancient days I am He. No one can deliver out of my hand when I act. Who can reverse it? Father, tonight we receive your word. We pray God that that word will come alive in our spirit man. We have eyes, God, but we cannot see. We have ears, but we cannot hear. And I pray tonight in the name of Jesus Christ, every dumb spirit be gone. Every deaf spirit be gone. Every blind spirit be gone. In Jesus' name. And let the body of Christ hear and see what you want them to see. For God, behold, there will not be any more confusion but as we draw nigh to the 10th month 10 speaks of completion and prophetically I declare tonight over the family church that there is going to be a completion that will take place receive that all over everyone that is in the church those of you that are watching online the month of October is coming. It's the 10th month. And there is going to be completion in the name of Jesus Christ. For that which you've been waiting for is going to be complete. For that which you've been toiling for all these years is going to be complete. For that which you've been wanting is going to be complete in Jesus' name. And God is already set in motion. God has already set in motion the things that is ordained for you and me. And so receive the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, bless us tonight. And as we will share this evening with the panel, we pray, God, that you will do something extraordinary. As I believe your word has gone forth. And we're going to see a change in the atmosphere. A change in the habits of your people. Not only at the family church, but the body of Christ at large. In Jesus' name. And everybody this evening said, Amen.
Amen and Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
into the church. Welcome to church. The safety aspect of coming back into the church. Um, when was it that we spoke with all the medical people? Eh? About eight months ago, we had a, an evening where we spoke about uh, the pandemic from a medical perspective. And we had all the frontline workers, that's right, with us here on the program, on the medical field. And they had given us some information regarding the pandemic, our behavior, what to do, what not to do, etc., etc., etc. Now, all of you know, you go out and you go to functions and you go to family homes. You just enter there. Your masks are off. I've seen it. I stand back and I watch. The masks come off. Now, we're going to talk tonight about some discipline. It's interesting. <clears throat> and as I read from the book of Isaiah, that the children of God, their eyes, they can see, but yet they cannot see. They have ears, but yet they cannot hear. And that's what's happened to the body of Christ now, Ben. Is that we all have eyes, but we are not seeing because the devil has run rampant with this pandemic. And he's just taken the lead and he's blinded the eyes of the believers. Now, let me give you a heads up. We're not going to go controversial tonight. There's no controversy or anything. We're just talking common sense. Because the Bible says God's given us a spirit of love, power and a sound mind. What's a sound mind? Common sense. Okay? Common sense. And that's a great blessing that God gives us. Common sense. And therefore if we don't have that common sense, we must ask God to give us that soundness of mind so that we are not moved by every wind and storm that comes, but we are moved by what God says in His Word. So tonight, I want to introduce to you the panel that is here, and I see that there are many of you that are watching, not to make you guys nervous. There's only about 8,000 people watching, so don't worry. But... Uh, I'm joking, by the way. Some of you will go and say, Pastor, no lied. Uh, tonight we have a very dear couple. They're part of the church family here at the family church. And both husband and wife team in the... Uh, and I'm going to get them to introduce themselves. And they have two beautiful daughters that also serve in the church. And both of them are serving on the praise team. They're on the praise team. Where's Brandon? Oh, you're on that side now. On the praise team, both of them are serving. And so this whole family of four are in the church and all four are serving. Man, I'm so tempted to say it. Let me say it. You, we're coming back into the building in October. Serving God in the church. Not attending, just attending. Attending anyone can do. Take the step of faith and serve God. Try and come and serve for one service, two services. Make a sacrifice and see what God will do for you. This is not a marketing ploy to get people to serve. I served for many years. I saw the fruit and the results of it in my personal life, in my job where I worked before I went into the church full time. I saw the favor of God come. You see, when you make sacrifice for God, God will bless that sacrifice. So I challenge you today, people in the family church, if you, want, if you had a tug and if the devil got the better of you, say to him, enough is enough. We're putting up our hands to serve. Message us tonight and we'll connect with you and see where we can put you to serve. If you belong to another church, call your pastor tonight after the service and tell him you want to meet with him or her to talk about serving in church. The Bible says the greatest in the kingdom is that of a servant. Not the pastor, not a bishop, not a doctor and a reverend, 
And not all these fancy titles. Is a servant. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that an eye opener? That the greatest in the kingdom is a servant. But in the world, we look down at them. In the kingdom, God esteems them higher. God works totally opposite. So enough preaching tonight. You got the word. Let me get this lovely couple to now introduce themselves. And then I'm going to get Portia to give you a little bit of a rundown regarding tonight's uh, program. And then we're going to go straight into it. Uh, good evening, church. My name is Rishad Rashid. And I'm a post basic pharmacist assistant at a private hospital. Good evening, church family and online viewers. My name is Lorna Rashid, and I'm a client relations officer at uh, a hospital. Thank you. Good. Okay, so we all know that we've been in lockdown for how many months? Is it 18 or 19 now? 19. Something like that. So in the first lockdown, we were seven months that we were not in the church home. I'm mm. saying home, not building, okay? Mm. We were not first lockdown. Second lockdown, we were three and a half months. We came in and we were here for six mm. weeks, mm. only six weeks. We had October, but we did a drive-in. Mm. But in this home, in this house, we were here from 1 November till mid-December. That's only six weeks. Mm, or just early December, yeah. yeah. And then we went into the lockdown again. And that was what? Was that the second? Second. Second. That now, again, another three and a half months. No, no, we opened, sorry, three and a half months. Then we opened for Easter. Mm. April, May, two and a half months in this house again. And then we out again for three and a half months. So there's been so much going back and forth. And that's why pastors now made the decision that no matter what the number goes to, but it seems to be the lowest being 50, we are going to be remaining open. And so today we just wanted to have a couple who's in this field and so exposed to everything going on with respect to COVID-19 mm. and um, safety regulations and everything to do with uh, the pandemic from a health perspective. And they're going to come and um, educate us, I would mm. say, in this area. Correct. Yeah. So, we are talking about safety in the house of God. And you know when the pandemic first came about, April, May, June, there was a lot of, you heard the word smart aleck. Have you all heard the word smart aleck? There was a lot of that taking place. And people were giving their own revelation and their own talk. And everybody had a word about why it's okay not to be in the church building. Now, I don't want you to get me wrong. And I want you to understand what I'm saying to you tonight. I do know that this is the temple of God. Our bodies are the temple, is the temple of God. In other words, we are the church. The church is not a building. We understand that. We don't argue that. But the assembling of the saints and the coming together, the community that the Bible talks about, is something that needs to happen in order for believers to grow. Because if there's no assembling and coming together and community, then the church weakens. And many people who had and used to make those statements... I watch them personally and I watch their lives saying, Oh, you don't need to get into the church. The church is just the building. We are the church. Unfortunately, most of those people, and I'm talking a high percentage, as much as 90% of those people, are not regular people in church. They were never regular people in church. But during the first season of the pandemic, they had the, the most to say. About being in the church. It's interesting. And you need to be aware. And you need to be understanding. Of the times. And why the devil. Wants you to be away. From the church. And if you are not prayed up. 
if you are not reading the Word of God, then you're going to be influenced by the world and what the world is saying. Because if you're not filling yourself up with what God says, then you're going to be empty. And what will be the next thing to fill yourself up will be what the world says. And so tonight, our objective is to help you understand that the Family Church is opening in October, 3rd of October, 2021. Not 2022, 2021. That's in about two weeks' time, I think. There about. Ten days' time. And so we are coming into the building, and I know there are many churches that have already opened over, over this past Sunday, and some maybe in October. But we as a church here in Springfield Park, Durban, have made the decision we're coming back into the building. So we thought tonight we want to share, just like what Portia said, and explain to you how we are going to make it safe and give you peace of mind. So that you can prepare yourself to come into the church. And let each man judge himself. We're not here to judge you whether you're coming into the church or not. We're not here to judge you accordingly. Let God be that judge. Let the Holy Spirit do that, his job. But we are saying we are ready to flow with God. How many of you are ready to flow with God? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so... Love, you want to lead and... Uh, Ask the question. Yes, please. Okay, so um, thank you for joining us this evening, you lovely couple. So tell us about uh, how we can... If, if we're feeling nervous about coming into the building, tell us about how we can get rid of that nervousness in terms of COVID and the safety and... Things like that. Um, okay, so there's two aspects here that I'd like to actually cover. Um, firstly, with coming, I'm, I'm ecstatic about the 3rd of October. So Amen. I'm like so excited about coming back into the house of God, truly and sincerely. Um, and if, if people are feeling a bit nervous, um, be assured that the latest protocols are in place. Uh, Pastor mentioned a meeting that was held yesterday. Mm. There's a lot of behind the scene, um, you know, things that, that, that is prepared. For example, the, the protocols, and I know it might sound like a broken record, but it's, it's important protocols. For example, the um, sanitizing of your hands, the mm. social distance, the keeping of your mask uh, on at all times. I mean, here we have our masks off only because we be speaking at the moment. Um, also the social distance, there's a lot of uh, emphasis on that. Um, but I think the largest part is the accountability or, or each person taking responsibility for their own safety. Mm. So even as we come into the house of God, we also need to be individuals that uses God's wisdom to say, you know what, I am responsible for my own safety, mm. and I think that's important. I mean, um, and the other aspect that I want to speak about is what the Bible says about, um, well, uh, Pastor touched on it already, uh, forsake not the assembling of the saints. God specifically says it for a reason, because he wants us to be in fellowship. And he wants us to be, yes, we are the temple of God, I don't disagree with that. But I do believe that God uh, specifically wants us to be in fellowship. Mm. And somebody today, I mean, you know, before we could come here um, for a few days, I've been praying to God and asking God, you know what, what do you want to say to your children, to the church, to the online viewers? What do you want to say? Because we are merely instruments in God's hands. Mm. And by chance today, a dear colleague spoke to me and he spoke about an analogy. And I want you to vision this because it really blessed and touched my heart. So speaking about safety and protocols and the importance of being uh, in the house of God and in fellowship with each other, um, I want you to understand how important it is that we have each other's back when we're in the house of God and mm. you know, when we're together in fellowship, obviously with the protocols. Um, so the vision that he created in my mind was if you look at a lamb or a sheep by itself and you vision a lion going after that uh, lamb, mm. you know, that lion feels bold, you know, to go after that lamb because that lamb is in isolation. Mm. So let's picture ourselves in isolation and, and joining church from online. We're not in that fellowship sort of 
like edifying each other and reiterating what the sermon is saying or what we're saying, what, what the praise and worship, what it's like. But now I want you to picture a whole lot of lamb or a whole lot of sheep, you know. And then I want you to picture that same lion and envision that that lion is um, the enemy. So, so that enemy backs off because he understands that um, there's togetherness, there's unity, there's peep, there's sheep mm. building each other and they've got each other's back. So that's how the house of God is. We've got each other's back. And that is why it's so important that we be in fellowship. So, you know, I really hope that you would take from this, I mean, if I backtrack to the last 19 months, I had my own conviction that took place where I went into a point of fear. Fear to go to work, fear mm. to be in the hospital, fear to be in church. Mm. And a dear friend um, who's a nurse spoke to me and said to me, Lona, you don't have the luxury of fear. You have to brave up and you have to face this. Mm. And that was a change. It was a shift change for me. And I honestly believe that it was God telling me that you're actually not a child of fear. Mm. You are fear, uh, you're wonderfully made, you know. Mm. And, and, I, and I think if there is nervousness or fear, then maybe we can use God's word to say, no, actually, I'm not a child of fear. Uh, I'm strong and I'm bold and use the word, the, uh, God's word to encourage us. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You actually touch on a very good point, Lorna, because one of the strategies of the devil is to bring fear. Whether we're in pandemic or not, and think about it. Think about it in your personal lives. Before the pandemic hit, if there were things that ever got you down, was fear. Fear is something that is opposite of faith. And so it is one of the devil's main strategy to bring you to a weak place. Because he knows when he has you in a place of fear, not only can you not think and reason, but it also affects your relationship with God and your Faith weakens. When your faith weakens, the devil knows that he has you. But when your faith gets strong, the devil cannot have you. Because your faith in God overpowers any spirit of fear. And that is why the spirit of fear, we have to be careful that that must never enter our homes. Leave the, leave the, the virus, leave the pandemic. Leave that aside. I'm talking normal day living. Don't ever let fear come in. Fear of losing a job. Fear of getting sick. Fear of being in an accident. People can just be paranoid and their entire purpose in life can come to a halt, a standstill, just because of the spirit of fear. And we know everybody says it. Everybody puts it on their status. God's not given us a spirit of fear but of love, power, and a sound mind. That is a fact. But how about let put, let's put that into action and put that into practice now from the 10th month going forward. No fear. No fear because God is for us. Amen. What's the next point? And I think the next point is going to be a little bit interesting and I would like to make a, a statement after Richard continues. Before we go to the next point, would you like to add anything to that, Richard? Uh, yeah, um, just to reiterate the point about taking personal responsibility for your safety. Remember, guys, that this virus works in such a way that it affects people when you infect other people. Mm. So if you are taking responsibility for your safety, you are, in effect, also taking responsibility of other people's safety mm. that are around you. So your family members, the people that you work with, the people that you come in contact with every day. So by you making sure that you are safe, by making sure that you adhere to all of the protocols, the sanitizing, wearing of your mask, and keeping your social distance at all times, just remember that you are not only keeping yourself safe, but you're also keeping your family safe, you're also keeping all the other people that you come into contact with safe as well. Good. Okay. So with COVID over the last 19 months, it has brought about so much of stress in families, in mm. individuals. What are your thoughts um, on post-COVID stress? Having COVID yourselves. Yeah. I actually. think, you know, 
Um, the stress come, it's a natural part of you to be stressful, especially about stuff that you don't understand. And it's important that when you're seeking out knowledge, to seek it from the right place, or from the experts that yes. know what they are talking about, and not just listening to every Tom, Dick, or Harry. Because mm. we, we sometimes tend to look at the most sensational stuff, and we take that and we run with that all the time. But what we need to do is to look at the experts and see what the experts are saying, and then follow what they are saying, mm. and, then, and then take it from there. So Good. Um, my feeling is that COVID is going to be with us. It's not going away anywhere anytime soon. What we need to do is to learn how to live with it, H how to still be, uh, be our normal selves, but still also take into cognizance that the virus is still around. So if we're going to stress about it and if we're going to worry about it and it's going to be at the back of our, uh, at the back of our minds, it's just going to cause us to get other infections and, uh, and other stuff that's going to happen. We are just going to get more sick. Mm. Mm. And, that's, and that's going to be worse because sure. this actually affects our immune system. Mm. And by you stressing, it's going to just make it worse. So Good. the best thing to do is just leave it into God's hands. Think about it very, very carefully. Whenever you, even when you want to send out any messages or if you want to pass on anything about the virus, make sure that what you are sending out is actually the, the truth of what mm. is actually going on, instead of sensationalizing everything and getting other people stressed, especially family members and older family members as well, because they tend to stress out the most. Mm. Good. Just quickly, um, when our family of four, uh, this was December last year, 50% um, of my family of four got COVID. And the mm. other 50% of my family of four, so two of us got COVID and two of us didn't get COVID. Mm. Um, and I was one of the people that didn't get COVID, but I was not okay. From being a very composed and strong person, I just was not okay. Mm. So just to answer that on the thoughts on the post-COVID stress, mm. if there's ever a time that anyone is not okay, maybe reach out for help. Um, I reached out, I reached out to the church and I reached out to my family member and I just said, I am not coping. And there's nothing wrong with doing that because mm. then I got the support that I needed and the advice that I needed mm. and then I could get through what we needed to get through and by the grace of God, we got through it. But my message to you is reach out. Good. Yeah. And I think that actually goes beyond COVID and the pandemic. And that's the, one of the the strengths of being in a local church. Mm. When you're in a community, you are loved. You have a sense of belonging. You have a sense of being valued. valued. Mm. And it is easy to reach out when you are in a known community than an unknown community. And I was speaking to some people today and explaining to them how important it is to be in a church community. This family, they were out of church for a while and we were talking about a few things and I explained how it is so important to be in a church community and to be in relationship with people. I mean, when I look and I see the team that serves at the family church, even prior to COVID, the first six months of us being in the building, man, it was just like God had started something brand new and people just could not get enough of church. We, some people, before, years ago, you had to drag them into church. Now you've got to drag them out of church because they only want to stay in. That's what community does for you. So when Lorna says, reach out, beyond COVID, if you have a need, if you have need someone to talk to, reach out and talk to people. Pick up the phone. And it's okay to pick up the phone and talk to someone. There are many people out there that God is using and they could be the person that has the answer to what you are struggling with. Okay? Now, the next point, and maybe I want to start by uh, laying a foundation and I want to talk about the dreaded word What's the dreaded word in the pandemic? Anybody? Who knows? Starts with V. Yes. 
Vaccine. Thank you, young girl. Vaccine. Not Maxine. Vaccine. So, let me just start off by saying this. Portia and I are proud to say that we've now taken our second dose of the Pfizer vaccine. Both of us have got the Pfizer vaccine. I see everyone went quiet. Let's give the Lord a hand. Or are you going to say, get thee behind me, Satan? Or am I going to say, get thee behind me, Satan? But on a serious note, when the pandemic first hit, and uh, everybody was talking, and everybody was discussing what was happening, and discussing all that was taking place. All of you heard about the triple six, and the mark of the beast, and all of that. Now I'm not making light of that, never. That has its place. But God has given us sufficient wisdom to apply and to make a decision. The vaccine is not a chip. It's like any other vaccine that we had taken in the years past. Growing up, most of you got marks on your shoulder. How you got the marks there? You fell down and injured yourself. No, they put, took you into the hospital and gave you the vaccine. What vaccine? Whatever past pandemic was there. And there's a whole list of them, past pandemics. I saw it yesterday and I read there was at least a dozen and they gave you the year that those pandemics came into being. So everyone's got those things to keep us protected from it. Same as what Richard is saying, it's not going to go away, but the vaccine is going to be something that's going to help prevent us from the pen, uh, that virus having to have an adverse effect on our lives. You see? So, let's talk about the vaccine. I don't know who wants to go first. Well, okay. My personal view basically is I would rather have some protection than having no protection at all. So, when it comes to the vaccine, we need to understand how vaccines actually work. So, what they're doing with the vaccine is They've developed it in such a way. Yes, it's been developed in a short space of time because this vaccine just hit everybody all of a sudden. And they needed something to be done. So the experts have come around and they said that they need to develop the vaccines. So they have developed vaccines. And remember, the vaccines that we are getting right now, the Pfizer vaccine, and also the Johnson & Johnson vaccine that was given to, to the healthcare workers in the beginning, are all SAPRA approved, which means they are approved by the council who approves all of the medication that we get mm. in the country. So you can't get any medication without them approving it first. So the vaccines that we do have at the moment are said to be safe. So there might be people that do have adverse effects of the vaccine, like you might get symptoms and stuff like that. But that, that's not to say that it's going to happen to everybody that, that takes the vaccine. So like I said in the beginning, I would rather have some protection than having mm. no protection at all. Good. Lorna, on your side, what, what can you add? Okay, so um, if you'll allow me, I want to just share a little bit of uh, stats. Please. So now mm. I am a, uh, now here where we are, I am very pro-vaccinations, -vac -vac mm -hmm. right? But if I backtrack to 19 months ago, I was completely against the vaccine because I was so skeptical. And I just want to be real about it because I was just thinking to myself, okay, I've stayed for a few months without getting COVID and why should I take the vaccine? I don't know what's being injected into my body. I don't know what the side effects are going to be, etc., etc. And then when I watched um, other colleagues take it and obviously did my own little research and things like that, I was one of the first few people to actually take it and I felt quite confident about it. But why I want to tell you why I'm so pro-vaccine now is, um, firstly, when we take the vaccine, remember there's some people that cannot take the vaccine. If they've got allergies, mm. um, if they've got underlying issues and things, they, they, it's out of their control. They can't take the vaccine. But we who can take the vaccine, we're actually creating more sort of protection to, for them because we don't become carriers of the virus to them. Mm. Um, and then I just want to echo what uh, President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa shared um, in the last family meeting that he had, 
Um, this is stats based on the 6th of September, and it was some research in the Cape Town Hospital, right? Mm. So just imagine this picture as to why I believe the vaccine is just so important. So out of about 156 patients who were hospitalized, right? 156. Mm. 153 of those patients were unvaccinated, mm. which left three people that were vaccinated um, admitted. So we, the message from this research is not saying that the vaccine is going to stop you mm. from getting COVID, but it is telling you that you are creating a greater uh, immu immune support immunity for yourself. Yeah. Then let's look at a little bit about the ICU stats, and then lastly we'll go on to the ventilators. So, um, yeah, so getting the vaccine, we've touched on that part, right? We're not saying that when you take the vaccine, you mm. won't get it, you won't get hospitalized, etc. Now let's look at what happens with the ICU patients. Mm. In the Sorry, same Lola, research... Is the ICU oxygen? No, we're getting to that part last. Getting? Oh, yeah. okay, so it's, good. it's a bit both, right? Good. So in the high care unit, ICU, etc., mm. uh, in this specific Cape Town hospital now, 66 patients were admitted into the high, key, sorry, high care mm. ICU. Uh -huh. Out of that 66 patients, 66 was unvaccinated. Mm. So that tells us that 100% of the patients that ended up in high care or ICU was 100% uh, of those people were unvaccinated. Not vaccinated. So what, are, what is the message from the stats is that it's easier to end up, God forbid, in ICU without the vaccine. It mm. goes back to what Richard is saying, is that level of protection against the virus. Mm. Lastly, we're speaking about the ventilators when the patient is on the support machine mm. now. And of those stats, 32 on ventilators. And what is the stats showing of the vaccine? Mm. 32, which is 100% of the patients that ended up on the ventilators, 100% unvaccinated. So the, sp the stats are obviously speaking for itself. Sure, sure. And so that's a good snapshot of what the general picture is nationally, I would imagine. And uh, you must do some homework. And Richard alluded to earlier on, not just uh, checking everything that pitches up on your WhatsApp or your social media. Go and do the research. There are legitimate registered sites out there and that you can go on and you can have a look and see the stats and that will help you understand it better of how this virus is being managed. And when you are forewarned, when you have the knowledge, you, have, you are forearmed and you are able to make decisions better and more wisely based on facts and not assumptions and rumors like we see taking place. Good, what's your next question? So there's talk about a new variant. Is this true? What is this new variant and how? No. Okay, when it comes to the variants, there's a whole lot of different variants or strains that are out there of the COVID, right? So the, the prevalent strain right now is the Delta variant. So that is what they are seeing when they are testing the people, that is the main one that is that had most of the people have strain of the Delta variant. Mm -hmm. But there is also numbers of people that are getting the B1671, which is a strain that was predominant in India, which when they had their outbreak, right. that was the prevalent strain then. Mm. We do have, because there are still people that are coming in from the subcontinent that are coming in down here as well. So you do get some stats of a few people that do have that variant. But the latest one, like you said, is the C1.1. That is the latest variant that is out there. But there is very low, uh, there, there's a very l low number of people that have that at the moment. I see. So mm. uh, the thing with the strains is, it goes back to the vaccination. If more people get vaccinated and we have herd immunity, there's less a chance of, the, of those strains moving around and of those strains actually getting out into the public. So. If we have herd, Im Im herd, Im Im herd immunity, which is more yeah. people that get vaccinated, mm. there will be less a chance of us getting it, uh, the different variants and stuff like okay. that. So uh, when we talk about the C1.2, uh, so because there's such low numbers, and even with the B1671 as well, there's, there's low numbers, so they don't have that much of, of stats on that as yet. So they're still waiting for stuff like that. Can you just quickly uh, explain to the congregation what herd immunity is? Mm -hmm. Basically, herd immunity is when the majority of the people get vaccinated so that you have uh, 
the immunity, so the majority, when the way the virus spreads is from one person to another. Mm. So if, when the majority of the people get vaccinated, you're not gonna going to infect other people with it. So in that way, when we have herd immunity within the country, we can go back to being like normal, like if we go mm. to... That's a bigger number. There's now. bigger numbers mm. that, are, uh, that are vaccinated. There's a bigger, bigger number of people that have that protection. So that is okay. why I guess the, the president is encouraging everybody, everybody to, get, to get... So we could reach herd immunity, herd immunity as soon as possible. As soon as possible. Mm. So Good. that we go back to normal. Good. And um, you know what? Maybe we can say this and to online to all those here in the family church. If you need help to get to a place to get the vaccine, give us a call and we will arrange for someone to come and pick you up and take you to get vaccinated. Don't let transport be an issue. If you need help to go and get it done, we can help you as a church. Okay? So we don't want to hear down the line, you did not have transport to go, but yet you wanted to go. That's a small problem that we can take care of. So take the step and get your vaccine. It is not evil. I've got the vaccine. I told you earlier on. So don't say, get thee behind me, Satan. Portia and I have both got the vaccine. And there are thousands of people that have taken it. Get the vaccine. Be safe. Is that okay? And if you'd like to talk about this further, give us a call. We are more than glad to talk to you over the phone and counsel you on this important subject. On that subject, there are people in homes where the husband has taken and the wife hasn't, or the wife has taken and the husband hasn't. And that mustn't now become a bone of contention in the home. But you must have discernment to pick up what the devil is trying to do. You understand? If they haven't taken it, don't go and make a big fuss and now segregate them. You understand? Let God guide them and help them. But don't now go and break your marriage because someone hasn't taken the vaccine. And I've seen that happen. I've seen arguments take place because people are not taking the vaccine. Let's just be wise, let's just be mature, but let's be understanding, especially in the time that we're in. Because it is something that has hit us for the first time. And now we are, what, 18, 19 months into this, and we have grown more wise since April, March, April last year. We know much more this year than we did last year. And we are more confident this year than we were last year. Have you got a last question before we end? Well, for those who have taken the vaccine and we've heard about these booster shots, do we have to continue going for, you know, for these boosters? Okay, so the experts have been saying that um, at the moment there isn't any need for anybody to take any boosters because the vac those that have been vaccinated now, the vaccines are sufficient to last for a while. But like we know, with anything, the vaccines are not going to last you your whole life or um, for years to come down the mm. line. So what's going to happen is in the future, within they say within 12 to 18 months, you more than likely are going to have to take a booster shot. So also, also to remember that the booster shot, what's going to happen is should any other strains or variants come out, the booster shot will be able to protect you against those variants okay. and strains. So that's why it's more than likely you, we are going to have to take the booster shots. It's going to be the same like how we have your polio. When you were little, you had the polio mm. vaccine. And after years, you got the booster shots. Right. The same with the BCG good. as well, the same thing. That's exactly. a good explanation. Good. All right. Lorna, would you like to say anything before we conclude? Two things. Two things. Um, one is, let's get excited to be back in the house of God. And two is let's be intentional to know what is the strategy of the enemy. Mm. So let's go to the word of God and 
look at what's happening in the word of God. For example, the scripture we shared, forsake not the assembling of the, mm. of the saints. So what is the enemy's strategy? Divide, separate, isolation, all of those things. So let's go back to the word and say, uh, no, actually the word is saying, forsake not the gathering of the saints. So mm. let's get excited to go back into the house of God and fellowship and within, obviously, protocols. Mm. But let's get excited again and bring back the joy. Amen. God bless everybody and Good. the online viewers. Thank you. Good. Well done. Richard? Have you got a last parting shot for the people? I think, Pastor, we need to just reiterate to everybody to stay safe. And the main thing is that, like I said earlier on in the beginning, you need to take responsibility for your safety. Mm. So if every person takes responsibility for their safety, what's going to happen? Inadvertently, you're going to be affecting safety in the person that is next to you. Mm. And that's the main thing that we need to remember. Good. Good. You want to say something before we conclude? Okay, I can reiterate Richard about us, each of us taking responsibility for our own safety, but I also think that um, we must be responsible for others in terms of if we are not feeling well, do not come to church on those days. You know, because as much as we can decide to come here and sit down and not talk to or briefly talk mm. to someone just in a small distance. If we are not feeling well and there's a, a possible situation that we may have COVID, mm. rather choose not to come to church so. on that weekend until you know you are safe because mm. we are being responsible for ourselves as well as the others around us. But uh, it's very possible if you are well to come in here, to go through all the safety regulations, to come and sit, to come and worship freely, to feel the presence of God like nothing Hallelujah. that you experiencing mm. in your home, hearing the word of, the God, uh, of, of God in the room is, is amazing and incredible. Mm. And, so, and then just leaving, you know, waving to your friends and <laughs> seeing them from a distance, but you were here. And, you know, we've all been to the stores by now, I would think. Majority of the people have been to the stores. And just like how you protect yourself there, come protect yourself here. But you're going to get so much more fulfilled when you come to the house of, the, of God mm. versus going to a store. So we look forward to seeing everybody come back on the 3rd. Mm. And uh, we're going to be opening up our bookings pretty soon. And so we encourage you to book fast. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a wonderful day on the 3rd of October. Good. All right, let me conclude by saying this. Last night we had met with the uh, team leaders here from the family church and we had discussed um, to a large degree what's going to happen and how we're going to do it. Uh, fortunately, we've got so much of experience because we were in the building, out the building, in the building, out the building. We are now experts at all of this, but uh, I'm just saying. But we've got such a fantastic bunch of servants and they are just ready to serve you from the 3rd of October they are making every provision possible taking every provision possible they are taking every precaution possible and making the provision for you to be here in a safe environment Lorna said social distancing wearing of the masks fogging of the building sanitizing all of that is going to be the order of the day Come and worship God and get back into the community that God had planted you. If you belong to a church, phone your pastor, talk to him, and ask him, how can I get back into church? And I guarantee you, he'll give you guidance on that. Uh, I just want to change gears altogether. As much as we are now focusing on coming back into the building, I want to put out a very special request to you. As a church, we have been, we just celebrated our second birthday on the 4th of August, 2021. And in the two years that we've been here, we were how many months in normality, I said? Seven, Seven months in normality and before lockdown and 17 months in, in the pandemic. So in other words... Seven months in normality, 17 months in lockdown, and that was our two years here at the family church. We had put the vision up at the beginning of 
2020. January 2020, we put the vision up and we explained where we are as a church and where we want to be as a church. We are looking for land or a building. We are asking God to give us land or a building. Where we don't know, how big we don't know. I know some of you may say, hey, no, be specific. Tell God what you want. Yes, we've told him. Last night, something special happened here. But we want to ask you to stand with us in prayer. And if there's anything that we need right now, is your prayer over Portia and I as the shepherds of this church, our team leaders that are here, and the family at the family church, that God gives us a building of our own. We don't know. We trust in God that it could even be right where we are. He can do anything. And He's done it already when we opened the church. He's done that already when we opened the church. I took the picture and I've got it on my phone. I showed you this picture. And how important that picture is. Because I took it as a memorial picture to remind me of what God is going to do. And I'm saying to you, pray for us, please. Pray and stand with us in agreement for God to give us that building so that the vision and the mission of the family church in serving and building the multi-generational family can go on and we can see the end time harvest come into the house of God. Thank you. God bless you. And it was a pleasure being with us, being with you online and all of you that have attended tonight. Thank you for being here. Thank you to Lorna and uh, Richard for also sharing your wisdom and your experience with all of us online. If you want to just ask something or just find out uh, uh, if you have a question, give us a call and you can also talk to the couple that's here and I'm sure that they will be more than willing to share with you. And so this evening before we conclude, while we are online, I want Hayden to help me with something, right? There's a song that I really love. And I don't know if you all know the song. Right? It's a song I learned from a young kid. And it goes like this. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Hayden. Happy birthday to you. One more time. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Hayden. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Woo. Happy birthday, Aiden. So come on, hashtag happy birthday, Aiden. It's his birthday today, and it's the first time the birthday boy played his own tune. We made history at the family church. God bless you, everyone. It was great being with you, and I'm going to ask Portia just to conclude in prayer, and we will see you on Sunday, 9 a.m. online for the last time, and thereafter we're going to be in the building. But yes, we will also be online for those of you that want to know. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your presence here this night. We thank, thank you, you for Lord. what a joy it is to be found in your house today, Lord Jesus. We are so excited to be coming back, with, with, to be able to worship you fully and wholeheartedly, Lord. We pray that you'll speak to every heart here today so that they will... They will decide to just come back into the house, mm. Lord. They will Amen. take every Amen. restriction that has been stopping people from coming to the house, mm. Lord, that it will be removed at this time. Hallelujah. And that they will understand that how important it is to us, for us to gather as a community. We pray for everyone here. We pray for safe traveling mercies as they travel back home. Thank you for Hayden and the blessing that he is to this church. 
We pray that you'll continue to watch Thank over him, him, protect him, and guard him. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thank you, everybody. Stay online as the team will play out with the song, and you can sign off any moment you please. God bless. Oh